Coming up in this Women's Month edition of Salga TV, we explore gender-responsive budgeting in local government and we profile some successful and influential women in local government. From the Ndabangkulu local municipality, Nelson Mandela Bay municipality and the John Daolo Khaizewi district municipality in Gurumad. Lochani Dumelang and welcome to Salga TV with me, your host, Meralda. To kickstart our Women's Month episode, we have the chairperson of the Salga Women's Commission, Councillor Flora Mabua Boltman, to tell us more about the commission and her view on responsive budgeting. Councillor Mabua, welcome to Salga TV. Good morning, Esmeralda. Good morning uh, to Salga TV viewers. Councillor Boltman, what is the Salga Women's Commission? Salga Women's Commission is a commission that uh, deals with the empowerment of women. It deals with um, 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 uh, mainstreaming all the issues that are affecting women. What work has the commission done and how is it structured to support gender issues within local government? We have this uh, uh, structures launched nationally provincially, districts, and local. Now, we hold the Mahotas where we resolve on the program of action for, for, for women. From the national, the matters that are discussed, they are cascaded down to provinces. They go down to uh, the districts, where at the district you find that uh, the women commissioners at the district they meet with uh, uh, councillors at uh, local, and at local, we then call them women multi-party caucuses, and they raise their issues in, in those meetings. And through the caucus, their issues are then elevated to councils uh, at the province. They are elevated to province nationally. They are elevated uh, nationally, and there they find a, a space to be uh, put in the uh, uh, agenda of uh, empowerment of women in all the structures. And lastly, Councillor Boltman, what is gender responsive planning and budgeting and what does it mean for the local government sector? Gender responsive budgeting aims at mainstreaming gender into public finance. Gender responsive budgeting does not uh, mean separate women's budget but that general budget include a gender equality perspective. This means that uh, the differential needs and interests of women and men are used as basis of uh, uh, revenue raising and, 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 and public spending. So we, we, we now are mainstreaming our issues at that level so that we can be able to implement them with ease. Thank you. That's all we had time for today, Chairperson. Thank you so much for joining us. This is quite an informative discussion. Thank you. Up next, our Salga correspondent in the Northern Cape, Dibangle Langkume, takes a look at the role of women in local government leadership by visiting John Daolo Khaizewi District Municipality in Guruman. He speaks to the Executive Mayor, Councillor Sophia Mosikazi, and Chief Financial Officer, Ms. Khalalazang Morwani, about their roles in the municipality and how they contributed to the municipality's achievement of a clean audit outcome for the 2019-20 fiscal year. My name is Khalalazang Morwani, and I'm currently serving as the Chief Financial Officer of John Taolo Khaizewe District Municipality. I am a mother and a wife, mother of four kids and a wife. Please take us through the journey of heading a unit that has managed uh, true sound financial management to be at where it is now as reflected in the recent um, two consecutive um, audit outcomes by the Auditor General. Thank you so much. So basically what we did was to get our basics right and ensure that there are sound systems of internal control in place. People who are supposed to do the work are well capacitated to do the work. We get relevant people, relevantly skilled to do relevant jobs. 
and make sure that all our governance structures are in place, internal audit, risk management. We ensure that those things are in place and they are working. But most importantly, it's record keeping. You know, that, that can be the key factor to determine finally your outcome as an institution. If your records are not in order, you'll be unable to substantiate to the auditor or support what you've done and why you've done it. And it leads That's now to adverse opinions. That's yes. quite interesting. Sefo, please highlight for me challenges, your key challenges in this role, especially as a, as a woman and, and key successes in your career. One of the key challenges that I'm faced or we face in local government sector as women, it, it will be like dealing with negative perceptions. You know, um, being perceived to say, no, if you see her successful like that, there's always somebody behind no, her. Right. There's always something that she's doing to reach a point where she's at. And also to say that we do have our male counterparts. Yes, they have their role to play, but we also are equally capable to do whatever needs to be done. Thank you very much, CFO. In a few words, what would be your encouragement and advice to young women that are watching this episode that aspire to be in the field of finance? I would encourage them to say, look, we need that energy. We need those brains. We need the sector. The fact that you are even considering it, it means you care and you are able and the sector needs you. That was uh, Chief Financial Officer of John Daule with District Municipality in Northern Cape, taking us through her journey of being the steerer of the ship that has been sailing afloat and ensuring that there's some financial management in the District Municipality. I am Sophia Misikati, the Executive Mayor of John Daule District Municipality in the Northern Cape. Tell me now, for someone who doesn't understand what an executive mayor is, briefly tell us what are your roles and responsibilities in the municipality as, a, as an executive mayor? The mayoral committee is actually playing an advisor role to the executive mayor. So my responsibilities as an executive mayor, because I am the political head in the institution, I must ensure that I advise the MM and take care of the day-to-day -day activities of the municipality. Sorry to cut you there, what is an MM? Uh, the accounting officer, the is municipal the... manager. Oh, beautiful. Therefore, my duty is to ensure that when council take resolutions, the MM and the directors must implement those resolutions as taken by the municipal council. So what are the key challenges that you can highlight that you come across as a female executive mayor? And we, in, in responding to that, please do touch on the issue of, uh, of, of financial challenges that you come across in managing the institution. I actually start as a mayor of a local municipality in a small town called Olifansuk. It's about 100 k's from Kuruman. I start being a mayor in 1998. Nice. And uh, in that municipality, remember, at that time, you find mostly white people in the administration. So by then, I was elected as a mayor. At that time, it was very difficult because you are working with male counterparts and uh, know that it's always difficult for a woman to work with men. But in that case, in the municipality where I am right now, I'm working with a female speaker. I'm having four members of the mayoral committee, women with one man. And uh, I'm working so nicely with them. Even if we have one man, he's very cooperative with us. So for me, it was not such a challenge because uh, I always work with men. I respect them and we also want that respect that men should also respect women. What, uh, as a parting shot, and in wrapping up our, our, our chat, our beautiful conversation, what would be your encouragement to a woman who's sitting at home watching this Salga TV episode? Would you, would you encourage women to join politics? And if so, why would you do that? I would encourage young women first to go back to school, finish off your school, and you can join politics, but what is important is education, because if you are educated, no one can take it away from you. You can still be at school and you can still be in politics. This politics is a man's world. 
And if you are not strong enough, it can make you or break you. Executive Mayor, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate having spoken to you. And please do keep up the good work of leading such a good, transformed institution in the space of local government in South Africa today. Thank you. Thank you very much for visiting our municipality. We really appreciate it and are welcome. On the line, we now have Mr. Tabani Mjongwa, a researcher at the Commission for Gender Equality, to expatiate on the ins and outs of gender responsive planning and budgeting. Welcome, Mr. Mjongo, and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much uh, for this opportunity, and uh, good afternoon, and welcome to all your viewers. Thank you. Now to get today's proceedings on the way, I think it's paramount to state that gender-responsive budgeting in local government does not mean a separate budget for women and men, and does not necessarily aim to increase the amount of money spent on women. Having said that, we can use that premise as the perfect segue for our Q&A. Now tell us, sir, why is gender-responsive budgeting important for local government? Gender-responsive planning and budgeting is important for local government because this is a means in a way in which you are able to empower local communities within a municipality. So, for example, through your IDP, the Integrated Development Plan in a municipality, which in a way is the planning document for a municipality, you'll have various programs. And if you incorporate gender responsive planning and budgeting into those certain programs, whether it's in a different, in the econo let's say local economic development and so on, you're able to have an impact, for example, to help uplift, let's say women, women economics empowerment through those various programs. And that empowers the local communities to have opportunities for jobs, uh, creates job creation, creates other opportunities which probably were not there. And gender responsive planning and budgeting allows those opportunities to be created within a local municipality. That sounds really interesting, but tell us this, how can municipalities transform their budgets to ensure that gender equality commitments are realized? First of all, the municipality needs to adopt the current plans and policies around gender responsive budgeting. For example, the gender responsive budgeting framework was approved or was developed around 2017 and 2018 it came out then approved by cabinet in March 2019. This is a national framework around gender responsive budgeting and framework, which is supposed to spill over from national departments to provinces to also the local municipalities. So that would be one of the key things. So the municipalities need obviously to adopt those kind of things within the municipalities also within their own plans they need to have gender mainstreaming plans how are they going to uh, and policies how are they going to implement certain programs or what according to that so it's really first of all about obviously start with your constitution and you you localize it to your idps and the recently developed district development model which actually talks about um, issues around gender empowerment and integration between the three spheres of government. And lastly, in what way can local government play a role in accelerating gender equality? I think they can play a crucial role, as I've um, just said, I've pointed out earlier on, in the sense that local government is sort of the call face of the people within the community. So I think the real key is to really adopt the policies, start implementing them, and then um, especially uh, if you, they are in the integrated development plan. And then, yeah, I think municipalities can, can really make a huge impact and it, it, it should be very good because the citizens within their local municipality can really benefit from this. As, as I say, it creates opportunities for job creation and other opportunities which may not have existed if, if, if these plans are not implemented. Thank you, Mr. Mjongwa, for joining us to clarify what gender responsive budgeting is for local government. Women in South Africa are making inroads into previously male dominated fields within local government. Commissioner of Metro Police in Nelson Mandela Bay, Yolandi Faro, tells us how she managed to forge a successful career in the police force. Mayor of the Ndabangulu local municipality, Councillor Zileng Sobutongo tells us about her journey to becoming a mayor.
I'm Yolanda Faro. I'm the Commissioner of the Nelson Mandela Bay Metro Police Department in Cabeja. My journey as a police commissioner started in 1999 when I joined the traffic department in Cape Town. My journey started at Jin Lo. This is a male-dominant environment, so it is unheard of for a female to be a commissioner. As a woman in a law enforcement environment, I didn't want to be seen like I'm in a position because I'm a woman. That is why I studied. I got a national diploma in policing, I've got a BTEC in policing, and I made sure that I know the department. I worked in the Department of Operations, I worked in the Department of Administration or National Policing Standards. I worked outside, I make sure I go on operations. So I need to really know what is the uniform that you're wearing, how does that fit and how does it assist you in your daily work. The buck stops with me. We have three functions, which is traffic policing, bylaw enforcement, as well as crime prevention. We also have a, very, a lot of joint operations where we work with the South African Police Service. We work with um, the Internal Safety and Security Directorate staff, which is the fire department, disaster management, the traffic department and security services. And we also work with a lot of internal staff within the municipality, as well as external role players and the community. My responsibilities as the commissioner of Kabeja, uh, the Metropolis Nelson Mandela Bay, it starts at the 24-7 basis. My diet is never going to dictate for the day. It all depends what is happening outside. Whatever happens outside, it might start 2 o'clock in the morning with a protest action. It might start even uh, 12 o'clock in the evening when they, they sorted one of my members or one of my members is in an accident. I believe that you must be there for your members, not only in good times, but also in bad times. What I love about my job is that I can serve people. But also, this job is not about the salary. You need to have a passion for what you do. It is a thankless job. People don't normally thank you for what you do. Very few people thank you. Lots of complaints, even if you've done something good. It is important for me that my staff must have the same passion that I have. I think as a woman, you bring a certain dynamic to a policing environment. We need men and women in the police. However, we need both to complement each other. Not to compete, but to complement. A woman will have a different type of a approaching a member of the public. If you go to a child and as a woman you will speak to a child if he has done something wrong, you will do that from a motherly point of view, but also in a stern way because you're in uniform. So I think to have women in a law enforcement env environment, it is not negotiable. Hello, Commissioner, can you please sign this for us? Which one is this? We've got the handbook for the members okay. of the Metro Police. If I look five or ten years from now, I would like women to be more prominent in policing environment. Come out of your comfort zone and be the government, be the local government, be the civil society that you want to see. My name is uh, Priscilla Tseleng Sobutongo. I'm the mayor of Ndabangulu local municipality. <laughs> I started as an intern in local government. Then I was appointed as an officer. I served uh, in two managerial positions. I started being in mid management here in Ndabangulu local municipality as a manager responsible for a IDP, which is Integrated Development Planning, Municipal Performance and IGR, which is Intergovernmental Relations. Then after that, I worked as Corporate Services Manager in the Alfredo Development Agency. Then in 2016, that's when I was introduced in council. I served as the Speaker of the District Municipality. Um, then in 2018, that's when uh, uh, my political party, the African National Congress, decided to take me and uh, 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 to serve here. 
in Dabangulu as, as the mayor. I, I do responsibilities that are delegated by a council itself. Responsibilities a, a, a council delegates to me are functions like preparation of those uh, IDPs, identifying the needs of the society, and uh, basically because this is a collective type of the municipality, so I do my work in consultation with members of the executive committee. So as the mayor, I am presiding over the executive committee, like the chairperson. You need to fast track land or job evaluations as well, because in the last council meeting we submitted some few positions. When my day starts, I come in in office around eight o'clock. Maybe it's important for me to highlight that I'm not a, a office person. I, I love or like working on the ground, interacting with communities, engaging with communities at that level, and also take them through the processes, planning processes of the municipality, because not all of them understand how projects and programs find space in the ITP. So that's, that's what I do basically on a daily basis. Because not everyone has resources to come to town to see the mayor in office and all that. The challenges are minimal. It depends on how you look at them. Because we know how our society at times look at us in terms of gender. This is a woman, this is a, a, a male. Then there's, there are those perceptions in the society that there are duties and responsibilities that cannot be done by a woman. But on a daily basis, I try to make sure that I dismantle those assumptions because it's something that I believe it doesn't exist. Whether you are a female, whether you are a male, if you are given a task, you must make sure that you perform that responsibility with due diligence. In five years to come, if you can see in Dabangulu as you came in, it's, 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 a, it's an underdeveloped a municipality and even our economic hub which is the town it's it still looks backward when you compare it from other towns even the neighboring towns like Mount Frey and Mount Elif uh, I want to to see it at that level and beyond that level to discuss gender responsive planning and budgeting in local government, our Johannesburg Saga TV correspondent Bonolo Selebano spoke to Minister Nkosa Zana Lamini Zuma and here's what she had to say. Minister, before we begin, I'd like to thank you for joining the discussion on how municipalities can contribute to gender equity and women's empowerment. Thanks for having me. Now, for the purpose of introducing this theme, what is gender mainstreaming and why is it such an important mechanism for realizing gender equity? So gender mainstreaming is important in the sense that um, government is trying to ensure that uh, government policies in every department do look at the impact on women and they include women. So as we develop policies, we ensure that those policies must result in a better life for women. And Minister, budgets themselves can actually be important tools or mechanisms for realizing gender equity. And this ties into the idea of gender responsive planning and budgeting. Now, what does this mean for government? because gender responsive budgeting and planning means that you can actually um, calculate in every rent how much of that goes to, towards women's empowerment and emancipation. It's a budget that must work for all, for men, for women, for children. It's a budget that goes together with the mainstreaming because mainstreaming alone it does not help if the budget does not go with it. So gender responsive budgeting means that um, all those policies are budgeted for. Because at the moment, we have the policies, but we can't tell how much of government's budget is going 
towards those policies that impact directly on women. Local governments are among the role players that are responsible for institutionalizing and implementing gender responsive planning and budgeting. In what ways can the sector play a role in achieving this? Well, I think that the, the local government sector indeed is uniquely placed, even though not exclusively. It is uniquely placed because one, they can do this through the IDPs right at the beginning. They can be able to say this IDP uh, impacts in this way on, on women. Secondly, they can look at re- they, they can do research and look at how the grants, the, their budget, their policies, their strategies are impacting on women. And they can look at, even as they provide water, how that is impacting on women and their time. Women having electricity to cook with, or is it just for lighting? All those things. Thank you, Minister. Uh, This actually segues to my final question. And as you know, women are significantly underrepresented across all levels of local government and on an administrative level in terms of the municipal workforce. Now, with the elections in mind as well, you know, what are your thoughts? Or what are your recommendations towards political parties and the local government sector on how they can promote the participation of women in the sector? Well, I think it, it starts with the election, as you say yourself. Um, we must ensure that Parties do field candidates, women candidates in the different wards, but also in PR. So that indeed, by right, the constitution says we must, there must be equality. So in reality, it should be 50, 50 at least uh, in the council. So we must work very hard towards that. When the councils elect mayors, speakers, chief whips, and so on, they should bear that in mind and not just say, oh, we'll just elect. They should bear in mind that there must be women. Minister, thank you for sharing your time and your perspectives. Thank you and take care. Thank you very much. Thank you. To close off the episode, we play out with an exciting insert featuring women in disaster management with a special focus on firefighters. Do follow us on all our social media platforms to keep up with the latest hot topics around the local government. That's all we have time for on this edition of Salga TV. From me, Meralda, your host, Nisa Legam Nand. Ikamalam Yunguzoto Priscilla Tanjawayo, Miss Venzela Etimbisa Fire Station. I'm a firefighter. Libizola Kakin Natlet Nessin Chodu, I'm a fireman. Kisabeza Ko Commercial Fire as a fireman. I specialize in rescue technician. Njalumang mm-hmm. figure M. Sevenzini, Guamelo would think you make a show or would emote in the seven Zangayo. Is ready and available for my community. The rope to get to the Sebedi Sango singing, Egito Yango and Haibanyan Hutobana rescue call, the rope to Katame Lady to Lady Lee, Dilly Red, and the Disa Lemal. Guamele would in check it oil, in check it if you will, or it is if it's there in the vehicle, in check it at disk if it's valid. The equipment is not a hydraulic, it's a returnal lens on a car. The radio who are hacking the lake is a bit of a bit of a bit of a bit. Machine is a hydraulic, in a hydraulic oil, cap a petrol. And then really, the breathing apparatus is a bit of a bit of a bit of a bit of the SCBA. Who are in a little more than a and a dear sabbat a hand to be because sometimes you can look at a more long or for man or about a more or when a little million or sabbat is a how him of man or how fish a man more or how would you then I'll be taking over from 
ishifte bizo vipuma. So kwa meli uti ncheke uti yongi ndo isi senje ngoba ngiazi nga kona. Mentality ya hau, ita mele ibe idule ilicha ati hure, hau ya kolong, ukono performa to your best ability, kuseiva bupilo ba motu. What motivated me to become a firefighter is in Teman Kula, the Kulengas go to Msevenzo Ababa, the Salas Bona Gum Sebenzo Oenzo Ababa, Godran Teman Bona Abantus Fazani, Bagala Basebenza, Go Fire Department, Bam Gelegilling, Abon Wutinam, Umsebenz and Awenza, Wutin Kono Uxiza, Umparat Witch, Espila and Awana, Sam Kotadi and Hagulu Kori Kinekarata of Sebezakabat, Lu Tusa, like who protect her mapilo abatu lu protected in kids abatu say champ because sometimes of manore in kuya mutuyacha and then our honu he save so that thing in motivate or lena kieta musabeti also that kieta honu to sabatu or bad ba honu we to salibon ama challenge is a siba now is katniss ning ugu tut mofia gu sin Abantu basi sasa basi sana le yankolo leo guti mobile equipment sisi seven zisayo iya sinda aingi skoro nugu sisi seven zilapo utufige sini ni umpara tu chateli equipment leo tuzo seven zangayo bafu nugu tibi basi seven zibon and they not trained nugu tibi na baga seven zani ya equipment leo so umpara tu sisi kala kaku nugu tisi abantu basi sasa ni bas bas shoni pe bas ten bafu nugu tisi zubasi zaza and this is about Nagi Gelang as a song is cut. Moba Aman, Laban to Miss Lisa Abanao, Natisinao, Mobangani. We went through our training, we are trained, and then that is why at the end of the day we are qualified firefighters. Ama emergency situation and gang are responder go war. Naya Guma Shake Fire, Naya Guma Industrial Fire. Naya na guma MVAs, ama MVAs that when utolo guti abantu batribegi ile imotweni, kodwa siya konu guti spasizi ngisikati, ngoba imotweni yetu sinayo imishini, e konu guti ikati imoto. Kutatu ya koko basa iti babata nguba di firefighter, sa musabeti oa si musabeti otata. Musabeti oa ubata pilu lime ike miso ito aha uje kame, because there's one thing eri rei nyata ngru na rela basa iti hore, nanga sikhoni. But once you tell yourself or uto khona, jekaler na baba nrele basadi resebetang in this field re khona hore rebedi firemen. Le basadi ka ufele the welcome hore baka ata batlo yeza musebetu ole na kuweza because kani nite re abatlo ka basadi baba in this field.